Hi again. Uh, today we are here to talk about React Native. Uh, and um, it's quite a new project. Yeah? Sorry, no. OK. It's quite a new project uh, from Facebook. So hopes, hopefully it will stick with us for a long time, not like other JavaScript frameworks that uh, dropped a lot these days. Uh, it has a uh, good traction, uh, good uh, forking on the GitHub, and basically you can all get involved into developing Git. Uh, it was open sourced on GS Conference in 2013. So I'm Emir Kurtovic, and I will uh, talk you about uh, React today, React Native in particular. Uh, I'm CTO for Task Rookie Company here in Vienna, and that's how we basically get to this this uh, platform. Uh, actually, I'm I'm quite old programmer, not just by age, but uh, I was kind of programming since uh, computers was were black and white. Uh, it was kind of uh, let's do everything on green screen and try to have uh, all the things in. Um, well, no browsers, no internet, no Stack Overflow, so everything what you wanted to do, you must have a ready documentation and paper books, uh, <laughs> if nobody <laughs> saw that recently. And that actually worked on, on Computer Wax, and uh, if you didn't ever see the programmer who knows Fortran 77, well, now you do. Uh, that is not me, this is me. Even after all technology in these years, and having a terrorist, the computer that is a thousand times uh, more powerful than the one on the picture, we still cannot uh, align the CSS vertically. Okay, so Task Rookie. Uh, I kind of come to this company by accident. Uh, six, six, uh, six months ago, I was uh, at a uh, location in Vienna, and I meet uh, uh, folks that are presenting their um, early new startup with uh, really good ideas. They kind of uh, interested me into it, and I took the position of CTO, and uh, we done all the back background stuff, all the API, all, everything that's needed for, for the launching it, but then it came to the front end to development, and um, yeah, it's kind of hard to find mobile developers nowadays. You can do a lot of uh, research, you can uh, wear signs, we need developers, like, our co-founder done yesterday, but uh, almost nobody applies. Uh, well, as all startups, we had uh, problems with um, costs. So getting investments here in Vienna, uh, you'll probably get easily their blood and their money. So when you get the funding, you really need to be careful how you spend it. And um, I know kind of, we are developers and we don't care about money, but when you're starting a company and your startup, you really do. So if you don't, you are probably dead in a few months. Uh, this is something you take from Payscale.com. This is average uh, payments of uh, uh, mobile, 90 mobile developers for projects like three months, uh, for two developers with all the taxes, office space, food, team building, massages, and everything that programmers requires for work, right? Uh, so total was uh, back then more than our budget. Okay, no native. What do we do? Next thing is was do it by ourselves. Let's learn everything and like to make it by ourselves. So okay, learn iOS, Android, Windows Mobile. That's like two lifespans probably. Uh, what's next? Let's do a web app. Web app, right? HTML, CSS. We know. Let's pick a JavaScript framework. Which one? So whatever you try to do, iOS, um, Android, mobile, uh, Windows Mobile at the same time, you are probably stick with Ionic or Cordova or something like that, and still you have the feel that you are inside the browser. Still there is back uh, button there, still everything does, doesn't work so smooth. Uh, whatever you create, uh, it's, it still feels like a browser, and it is. It's not native development. It's just basically your JavaScript code wrapped into the browser and shown on phone as its app. Yes, the App Store will take it, the iOS Store will take it, they'll put it online, but 
users don't feel like it's good. And we didn't want to learn everything by ourselves. We want to do stuff that we really like to do, you know, for weekend, we do programming. <laughs> uh, uh, not, not only learning new stuff. So we will start asking for React developers. Some of them applied. One had like six hours of experience in React. No matter if React is uh, introduced four years ago. Maybe he's doing overtime, I know. Something like that. So uh, if, if you are willing to try, uh, we are willing to pay for you to <laughs> start learning React with us, but from the scratch. Six years of, it's not really. <laughs> OK. Is it, uh, was the React was good choice? Well, the company who's using it are really large ones. If you didn't know, the Facebook Groups app is done in React. Instagram also, Airbnb app is done in React. And you see them as a real apps. They, they are not uh, web use. They are not uh, uh, cross. They are not uh, like uh, hybrid apps. They are really native apps and done in React. How is that done? Uh, so React JS. Uh, maybe some of the, some of you are familiar with it. Maybe you don't. But uh, it's basically giving you opportunity to uh, manage the virtual DOM. So in, in React, you are not like in Angular, you are not affecting DOM directly. You are affecting the virtual DOM, which React then translates, calculates the differences, and just updates the part that is changed on screen. That's basically giving you a lot of speed and a lot of control, and also the portability of the code and possibility to create components, real reusable components that work on everything. Mm -hmm. What's also React Native? React and React Native. Uh, it has declarative code. So uh, you don't need to think uh, how the code will do something. You think uh, what is to be done with that code in the function. We'll get to it a little bit later. So the code becomes more predictable. Uh, in one file that's controlling one component, you have its functionality, so its logic, uh, its view, and its styling. So one button is inside one file. Of course, if you have desire to that button to look on the different platforms differently, for example, you want to have that uh, iOS new look and Android real Android look, you will create two files, one for Android, one for iOS, uh, with different styling and everything. But in main file, you will include it same. You will not change the code. It will include the same name of the component, and React will take the one uh, for that platform that is running yet. Uh, so, uh, most of the people work with React telling that this is really, um, that you get really more confidence in changing of the code. Uh, in Facebook, they claim that new people that come to, to work on large scale projects basically becoming writing the code uh, same day that they come. There is no learning curve. You have one JavaScript file that is called the component, maybe 100 lines long, and everything in there. So. If you change something, it stays inside that scope. It's not affecting too many, uh, too much of your application. That's the, because it's reliable. Uh, so changing one of the parts will not crash everything else, but it will give the new functionality to everything else if they use it. If they don't, it will stay with the older version. And uh, with all this, you can build, as I said, reusable blocks. Uh, then uh, which uh, you can use across, the uh, across your projects. Uh, you can create NPMs that you can include in most of your projects afterwards and not writing the same date picker again and again. Uh, date picker was a bad example because you're actually using the system date picker, not anymore the web one. And that's the last thing, it's native. All the code that you write in React Native and now we have directly from Microsoft React Native for Windows, so you can build Windows mobile apps and Windows mobile desktop applications. Is built natively, so you get the, you can uh, project done in React. You can um, load in Xcode, compile it, and run it. Uh, for those who are really into the programming too much, so you still have a JSX inside React. And people mostly complain about that. So I'm, I'm feeling like I'm still writing HTML. You know, it's not a program. Well, you don't need to. You can use JSX. It's easier. 
uh, as you see, it's a lot of less, less code than other people like designers can change it. Uh, but you can also program it. You can write actually classes and everything, and you can build all the DOM and all the um, parts of your app through the classes, like you're writing in C or Visual Studio. So you're not stick to, to JS6 and HTML. Uh, not sure how you see, probably last row, see this? No, okay. Uh, so this is uh, three parts of code. Uh, one, uh, three, three different codes for three, almost the same codes for uh, iOS, for Android, and for web. First one is for web, second one is iOS, third one is Android. And they have only changed in this uh, square line, which is basically using of the component that we wrote and passing it parameter. And after that, uh, you get native app that uh, in Android says Android in web saying web, and in iOS saying iOS. Same component for all three platforms, so we're building one interface with one code, with one team that can correlate, learn together, and not get too much different and not to away, building the one app for all the platforms. Even more, not only the mobile. React.js is a base for React Native, and there is React Native VR, React Native for web and React Native for Windows. I mentioned it a little bit before. And uh, I know it's not a good practice to do that on stage, but um, uh, let's try to see uh, one React VR example. So this is using of React VR inside the JavaScript code and how it's easy to work with. Yeah, that's the change in 3D space, like one line of in React. Uh, code will be probably on, will be on GitHub, so you can check it out. All the examples you can find everywhere online, and you can build games and basically everything with the uh, same JavaScript. Okay. Um, sorry. Cons. Everything has its bad sides. The worst side of React is JavaScript. I don't hate it, but you see, <laughs> that's basically the problem with the JavaScript. Why? Maybe some of you know, some of us don't. 1 plus 0, uh, 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 in JavaScript is this result. So be careful when you're working with numbers in JavaScript, not in React, anywhere in JavaScript. I wish this is only the problem. There is a few pages of this. We'll skip that, but just quickly. Uh, definition of the function is nothing. When you say console log of the function, it's nothing. It doesn't give its return value, it doesn't have declaration, so it's none. Second thing, when you define the arrays and map it, sorry, uh, actually only first one of the uh, parts of the array is getting correlation with, with its key. You must use actual uh, strict uh, functions to, to access the parts of the array. If you access one part of the array, you can basically True whole array. <laughs> Third problem, uh, classes. In, yes, you have classes in JavaScript. It's functions, but they call them classes, OK, classes. So you have constructor with width and height, and you hate presenter. And you uh, inherit it, like extends the first class. In the second class, you, have, uh, you can have a constructor uh, that's basically calling the, its parent without parameters. And creating an instance of that class will give you error. You are not obligated to follow the rules of your constructor, of your parent class. So also to be careful with that. And the last one, I'm really not sure who done this, but none undefined type of object and all the things that you, if you don't declare your variables correctly, you will get the problems that something is null, but not undefined, or vice versa. 
Uh, also, one of the biggest problems of JavaScript uh, in React Native world is the JavaScript is single-threaded. The native, real native apps done in uh, Xcode, Swift, and Objective-C are basically using all the power of, of your device. JavaScript is using one thread. For multi-core uh, devices, that may be a problem. Uh, this is one thing that I um, found recently, also done by, by uh, Facebook. Uh, it's magic of flow, uh, flow.org. It's something that basically pre-debugging your JavaScript code. So um, you get a little bit more error documentation of things that can be wrong in, in some of, of uh, possible outcomes. I strongly suggest you to, to, if you work with JavaScript, to try this. It will help you a lot debugging your apps and give you a much better, much better uh, representation of the errors instead of something is wrong in line 10,000 and what if you compile it with Gulp or whatever they have now. Uh, that's basically it. A little bit shorter, but I expect a lot of questions for this. Hope so. Uh, and if you are willing to, to uh, work uh, with React, uh, please come to us. We will teach you something, and you'll find some really nice folks to work with. Uh, and you can really work on one domestic uh, uh, Austrian startup that's basically um, have a bright future, by my opinion. <laughs> uh, contacts are here. You can contact me on Twitter or whatever to ask anything about this. I'm really likely to answer in time, day or two. But uh, any questions will be answered when we Yeah, thank them. you, Amir. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, questions? No? Uh, yes. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. I, I'm, if there are any questions, I'm actually having, are you having also problems with the app? So I'm putting it away. We have a mic. I'm, we're dynamic. We have 15 minutes yeah. before our next speaker. We don't have to have 15 minutes full of questions. But t tell us a little bit about yourself. Because actually, your talk got really interesting when you started talking about the actual nuts and bolts of React. Wh yeah. Where are you from? Uh, Bosnia. Bosnia. Bosnia yeah. Are you related to Seat? To what? Are you related to Seat? Uh, now I am. Now you are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now we meet, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, so any questions in the audience? The mic in the back here? What does Task Rookie do? Uh, yeah, Task Rookie, as it say here, is a social um, marketplace where uh, anybody, especially students and developers and creative people, can uh, sign up to do the tasks uh, that are posted by companies or personals and directly earn from uh, them. So no more uh, interviews, no more test work, no more uh, internship. Basically, you just go to the market, you pick up the tests you like, apply to them, finish them, and you get paid. Uh, it's like Uber for services, and for us, it's like we are drivers. So whenever you finish your tasks and everything, you are basically covered uh, with uh, the company TaskRookie that stands behind you and the customer for payments. First question. Hi. Uh, yeah. I would argue that native development is uh, always better and more consistent than web development with a, like, with a uh, web framework. Um, why do you think uh, companies that are where money is no concern uh, are using these web frameworks for apps like Instagram and Uber Eats and stuff like that. Yeah. Companies with uh, a lot of money to throw away almost doesn't exist. They invest their money much more, much better than we are. Trust me that. Try to get some funding and you will see. Uh, and um, well, why it's better? Why it's better to use React Native than, than native development? Uh, you can get one team to develop an uh, app for all the platforms. So uh, there is no more problems with uh, handling a bunch of developers, organizing them, uh, several teams, and uh, you, you always have the problems through designers, through how, how the code is maintained. 
so basically, you need to maintain three or four code bases instead of one. Do you have them? Much easier to add features, much easier to control the errors, much easier to control um, the whole app. Uh, if you want to, to do something new inside your app, basically you need to change it on three platforms with a lot of people. And uh, with this, you're basically maintaining it from one place, from one source code. Um, yeah. Thanks for your talk. Um, you mentioned React Native for web. What is your experience with that? For example, I have a project running on iOS and Android. Can I just easily port it to the web as well? Uh, I hope so. We have internet here. Uh. Okay, thanks. Can you hear him better now? Yeah, but two more. Do you remember the question he asked? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can field another question. This is web app. This is a native app yeah. on uh, web. So everything done for mobile, everything that works on mobile. So all the web controls and everything you have directly in your browser without a lot of changing of your code. Third question. Actually, yeah. now I have a, another question about this before I ask my question. <laughs> okay. uh, why would you use React Native for web instead of regular React JS for this kind of stuff? Uh, instead of regular uh, React JS. Uh, because you cannot compile the iOS and Android apps and put it on store with regular React JS. Yeah, but I'm saying why React Native for web? Sorry. I'm, I'm asking why React Native for web yeah. instead of regular React uh, oh, JS? Oh, because then you again need to maintain two codes. You need to develop for the web, and then you need to develop second code for the native. Okay. <laughs> this is all one base, okay. code base. My question is, uh, I have fair uh, uh -oh. experience. I, I have fair experience with um, mobile development, especially for iOS, and I just started working with, with React. Uh, I, so I don't know. I'm just asking. Uh, I have a feeling that you still have to know about particulars uh, about each uh, mobile platform, like uh, navigation bar is not going to be the same, and so on and so on. And if you're going to learn uh, particular stuff for each mobile platform, why w wouldn't you go with the native development at, in the first place? Because you, you must learn na native stuff in order to use React Native. I have a feeling yep. that it's like that. So I'm asking, is it? Why? Um, I kind of started. Um, I kind of started learning Objective-C a few years ago and was really into it. Okay, this is great. Apple do it. It's to totally uh, concentrated language, uh, language just for mobile development. You can create great apps. Okay, forget Android for now. Let's concentrate on us. I start learning it and get really into it. And almost the first day app uh, is out for the store. And then Swift comes. So all your previous work down the toilet. You get back to JavaScript again. OK, if I'll do it JavaScript, then do all at once. OK, uh, I have a similar question. Uh, greetings from Sarajevo first. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm building a uh, web app uh, with React. And now I have to build a mobile app. It's the same app, but I have to do it in a mobile for the mobiles. Uh, why would I use a React Native instead of, let's say, a media query for the mobile devices, the tabs? And, because Saturday. you get native apps. With media query, you're still inside the browser on your phone. With this one, you get the app that is built like in Xcode. So you get every, all, all the power of the device. It's much faster. You can also uh, use uh, things like camera, uh, GPS positioning natively. Everything is included also. You cannot, you cannot get the GPS location in your app if you, unless if uh, a user must, must uh, approve it all the time, you know that. Here you get all the power of, of native app. And it's native app. It works like native app. It feels like native app. So basically, all, all the things that, that you are doing is uh, it's, it's smooth. It, it's, it's a real app. It's not a web view inside your phone. You know? <laughs> that's, that's the biggest thing on, on all this. So yeah. Question? 
Um, I think you left out one, one little piece. Uh, amazing feature of React Native uh, is the testing. Um, you can test it on several devices at once. So if you're using Hot Reload, you can place an, a tablet in front of you, an Android tablet, an Android phone, an uh, iOS tablet, an iPhone, and you click Save, and it's hot reloaded on all devices, and you can test it immediately. Uh, yeah. Are you using this uh, well, type of hot Yeah, that's, that's kind of... Um, uh, That's right. That's really good thing because uh, with with um, with Xcode and uh, Android, you whatever change you do, you need to recompile and then test it. With Jack Native, you have a server all the time in your development state. So whatever you change, you refresh your uh, iOS uh, emulator or your Android emulator, and the changes are shown immediately. That's really nice. Okay, no errors. <laughs> we have. One more question. Actually, uh, sorry, do, can you hear me? I think our, I don't have the sound. Thank you. Um, we have one more question, and then Robert Kubis. Is Robert Kubis here? Oh, he's miking up in the back. So one last question. Sorry, but it seems a little chaotic. We're trying to uh, adapt with all these different microphones, and our Wi-Fi is a little over. Last question. Uh, oh. It doesn't work. Okay, now, it's, now it works. Uh, I was also wondering uh, if you if you have have to if you're stuck with just a uh, declarative uh, way of writing um, UI templates, or if there is actual uh, UI tool for building templates with React, React Native. Is it like as if you're editing nib files yourself, or is there a builder for components on React Native? Uh, you can create components by yourself. Uh, you can use the one of many that are already done in, in, uh, to be working in, in native for both uh, for all the platforms, or you can go in Xcode, import a calendar, and use it from Reactive. So basically, you can uh, go in Xcode, uh, drop all the components that you like, make a wrapper for it, and use it from React Native directly. So no more problems with uh, domain web view. Good. Let's give an applause for Mia Kortovic. That's working. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was really good.